Hello and welcome to Nimasi This Week, the voice of maritime, brought to you by the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, the nation's apex regulator and promoter of shipping, maritime labor, the protection of our marine environment, and of course, Nigeria's participation in the international maritime organizations, conventions, projects, and activities. My name is Ubong Esien, and on this voyage, it's my pleasure to be your guide. the chairman Stars Investment Company Limited. You are watching Nemasa this week. It is the voice of Maritime. Stay tuned. Nemasa this week, the voice of Maritime, showing on these stations. Welcome back. It's still Nemasa this week, the voice of Maritime. And on the program, we go straight into the DJ's diary, spotlighting the activities of Dr. Bashir Chamu as he goes about his duties as the Director General of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency. Also on today's episode is Know Your Convention and the other regulars you've come to know the program for. So if you're ready, let's anchor away. Introducing the Nemasa Distress Response Call Lines for all maritime stakeholders, ship owners, seafarers, ship captains, whatever your challenge or distress in the Nigerian maritime domain, please call 0800-3-065-167-0708-0005-956-0700-0700-010. If you can't reach us on these lines, please call. 0700-0700-020-0700-0700-030. Also via VHF Radio Channel 16. Call and the master will respond. Director General of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NEMASA, Dr. Bashiru Jamo, has attributed the maritime security success recorded on Nigerian waters to collaborative efforts of all security operatives in the country. Dr. Jamo stated this while hosting the Norwegian ambassador to Nigeria, Nuit Lin, at NEMASA's headquarters in Lagos. The NEMASA boss explained the roles of NEMASA as regards maritime security for ships coming into Nigeria waters. We have what we call GMDSS, Global Maritime Traffic. Distress System. So this Global Maritime Distress System, it gives you a leeway for you with the press of button you get in touch with us and you tell us if you are in distress. But you, that call goes to you or to the Navy? No, it gets to us. It gets to you. And we connect with them. We, we, we interface with Navy yeah. in terms of piracy. Right. But in terms of uh, such a rescue or safety, yeah. So we deal with that separately. That is you. Because, that's because in Norway that's combined. Yes. That's Coast Guard and it's Navy, but it's under the, the Marines. Exactly. While here that's split. You have search and rescue, they have the more fighting. Part. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so under the Global Maritime Distress System, you have interface with us. We have what, what we call uh, uh, the uh, contact 
uh, um, experience center. Uh, that contact experience center is within the building here, it's on the, I think, first floor. So that also, we have number of phone numbers where, uh, you know, if you are coming in and you are having some difficulty, mm. you can easily get in touch with our experience center. And that experience center will now escalate it to the appropriate quarters that can come to a rescue. That is the second thing. Now the major and the most important thing is the Deep Blue project and under the Deep Blue project we have CPI center. So the CPI center, uh, we have land, air and sea uh, platforms. platforms. So these uh, platforms, uh, we have three helicopters, we have two special mission aircraft. So where the helicopters cannot reach, the aircraft can reach. So that is the air assets. Yeah. And we have air drones. This air drones is a, it doesn't have a, a pilot. Uh, if you are in distress up to 100 nautical miles, the drones, the air drones can go there and remain upload for 10 hours. He further spoke on how several security operatives collaborate through the Deep Blue project. The operations of the Deep Blue, it combines operations, police, army, uh, Navy, uh, SSS, uh, you know, uh, Marine Police, Police uh, itself, that is uh, Interpol, mm. and then we have NIA also. So all these arms, we move together. Dr. Jamo stressed that the administration's main concern was to address the issue of security. The Norwegian ambassador who agreed to the positive change in Nigeria maritime security history has this to say. It's been very positive. Very positive. We see the numbers. What is it? The Namasa DG in his response has this to say. When we came in, there were rivalry between the Nigerian Navy and the Namasa. We have to let the Nigerian Navy understand. Okay, on, in terms of operations and tactical approach, that is your own responsibility. When it comes to the issue of logistics, when it comes to the issue of policy interventions, when it comes to the issue of uh, intelligence gatherings and other things, we have a place to stay. So in so doing, we decided to become friendly with the Nigerian Navy. So the issue of rivalry is no longer there. The issue of security is everybody's business. Dr. Jamo explained Nigeria's plan to establish a regional maritime safety and security training center where regional states will be trained and research will also be conducted to ascertain the root cause of maritime insecurity in the region. We have to get to the basics. What informed these people into this crime? Some say poverty, some say lack of employment, some they say greed and so many other issues. But in every country you go there are peculiar problems, includes laxity. For instance, if you go to some of the countries within the, uh, the Gulf of Guinea region, you find that by the time weekend comes, all the armed forces relax their own activities in terms of monitoring. So we must come together, conduct research. Each country, they have their own peculiar problems in terms of the maritime insecurity. You conduct research and you advise different countries how to address different issues and problems that you have in their own country, in that country. At the end of the discussion, souvenirs were exchanged and group photographs were also taken to commemorate the occasion. There cannot be economic development without transportation. Transportation cannot serve its purpose unless it's available in a safe, affordable and secured environment. These were the words of Vice President Yemi Osibajo, who was represented by the Minister of Transportation, Right Honorable Rotimi Amichi, at the National Transport Summit of the Chartered Institute of Transport Administration of Nigeria, CIOTA. This year's summit is the third organized by CIOTA, with the theme regulating the transport sector in Nigeria, the state of the art, and the years ahead. The Vice President applauded CIOTA for the apt and timely theme noting that it's of special interest to the current administration. Your theme for this year's summit, regulating the transport sector in Nigeria, the state of the art and the years ahead, 
is of special interest to the present administration. The theme and the sub-themes of the summit are in tune with government thinking and actions, as can be seen in the massive transport infrastructure developments in the rail, road, maritime, and air subs, air subs sectors. Dr. Bashir Jamo, the Director General of Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NIMASA, who doubles as the president of CIOTA at the event, explained the concept behind the theme. The theme is a call to a renewed scrutiny, supervision, and stock taking within the transportation sector, a critical regulatory obligation such as transportation, safety, quality control, documentation, and licensing, information sharing and data mining, professional education and public enlightenment, enforcement of rules and standardization of procedures for seamless collaboration among the statutory institution with mandates are imperatives for making the sustainable and economically viable transport sector in Nigeria. Dr. Jamo stressed the inevitable functions of transportation. I have always maintained, and permit me to say it yet again, that transportation is life, and life is transportation. Our social life depends on transportation. The backbone of oil and gas ministry also rests on transportation. The Seattle president therefore assured the government at federal and state levels of the institute's readiness to work with them. The summit also witnessed the induction of new members into the institute, delivery of papers by stakeholders, and panel discussion. The Director General of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NIMASA, Dr. Bashiru Jamo, has called for unity amongst maritime journalists. Dr. Jamo made this call while the Association of Maritime Journalists of Nigeria, Amjon, paid him a courtesy visit at NIMASA's headquarters in Lagos. The NIMASA boast while charging the maritime journalists to unite themselves appreciated the value they have added to the industry. I must quite appreciate the media group, the maritime industry, whether you are divided or not divided. I think you are doing a lot in terms of enlightenment in the public, in terms of changing perception, in terms of direction in terms of knowledge base, so many things, you know, you wake up at 3 o'clock, you open your phone, you see maritime media, you see reports, you see new things coming in. Uh, whether we like it or not, yes, there is value added, but it could be better if you become one. He also challenged the media to be more cautious of the information they share, adding that information shared cannot be retrieved and this may negatively affect them. We find some media group giving the narratives against their own sense. Because sometimes when you give in news, when you produce a negative news, the implication of that negative news is not only to the person you are targeting. It may be to you, to your family, to the country in general. So uh, when you are together, you call yourself to order. Why should you do this? This is the implication of which you do. And you know, we used to say that this story we have is not only meant for you to eat, but also for you to keep certain things inside. Inside. And this news that you have, it has time. There are information you have. If you think twice, you say, no, this is not the time, this is the right time. It's not right for the public to have this information. So all these ones has to do with unity of purpose because once you are together you are one for all all for one when they attack one the entire group will come and see how they can rescue him the association of maritime journalists of nigeria had earlier announced dr jamo as one of the awardees of the 2021 edition of its annual conference and awards the journalists however brought the award to the nimasa dg who was unavoidably absent on the award night. The Nemasa boss who thanked the media for celebrating him by giving him an award noted that he would have appreciated it if the industry was celebrated instead. The president of Amjon, Paulo Bukiri, who spoke on behalf of the journalist, explained why the media has chosen to celebrate Dr. Jamo. We are celebrating you, sir, because of the 
transformation you have brought to the right of there. And we know and we're expecting that we will see we will see this industry become blue as you have targeted. The president of the association formally handed the award to the director general of NIMASA. viewers welcome to another exciting edition of know your conventions on the master this week the voice of maritime i am olabisi george and today we'll be talking about the international convention on load lines and i have two professionals and technical experts to discuss on the convention today engineer patrick Eigbe, deputy director maritime safety and seafarer standard department you're welcome to the segment sir thank you for having me and also Olumide Oyewole, Marine Accident Investigator. You're welcome to this segment also. Thank you very much for having me. Engineer Patrick, let me start with you. Can you give us an introductory aspect into the International Convention on Load Lines? What is this about? Thank you very much. A load line are special marks that is normally placed at midship. A midship, I mean the middle of a vessel longitudinally you know uh, it's normally the maximum permissible limit in distinct waters to which a vessel can be loaded we had the first load international load line convention in 1930 and thereafter amendments had been carried out uh, the last amendment was in 2003 so that is a brief... Uh, so basically, the load line convention is for safety and stability of the vessel to ensure that these vessels are not overloaded that result in accidents. Yes, you're right. So that they are not overloaded. A hypothetical example is like a bus, a vehicle. All right. When you overload a vehicle, a vehicle is supposed to carry, say, eight passengers. And when you have these conductors carrying up to 18, mm -hmm. you see the vessel listing let me use the word, listing to one, uh, one, one side. And then uh, you, you never can tell. You, accidents. accidents to happen, you lose control, and then there will be accidents. Same the goes with the vessel, for stability. For stability and, That's right, and safety of uh, 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 vessels. Uh, to have uh, a, a special max. Okay. Uh, so below, you are not allowed, not allowed to exceed to that max, depending on the geographical locations. Okay. So, um, Olumide, you, um, what exactly is the International Convention on Loan Light about? You want to give us an overview of the salient uh, provisions of this convention? Thank you very much. Um, so, the International Load Line Convention, as was previously said, um, is more on safety and the marine accident prevention. The International Load Line Convention has 34 articles, which generally talks about the general provisions how the requirements for it to come into force, applicability, denunciation, and all that. And the main part of the International Red Light Convention is the annexes. We have three annexes in this convention. And the first annex talks about the regulation for the applicability of load lines. And um, under this annex, we have four chapters. And these chapters are the main body of the load line convention. The chapters talk about the, the first, the introduction, then the free board assignments, then special markings for um, timber vessels. So we have a specific load line for vessels that are made of timber, that their hull is made of timber. And um, the second annex talks about the various 
zones and areas and the seasons because the load line convention takes into cognizance the fact that the stability is mainly also affected by um, salinity of water, the type of water, the temperature and the density. So the convention has taken that into consideration and they've tried to ensure that there are different markings for the different seasons, the different types of water that yes that the, that the vessel will be operating on. Then the third part, the third annex talks about the certification for this load line convention. For every convention, for every rule, you need to have a certificate that shows that you are compliant, if you are compliant. So that is your evidence of compliance, yes. So the certificate, the Annex 3 shows um, a sample of what certificate should be like, what should be embedded in certificate, the details and the components that a certificate should um, comprise of. So that is mainly um, the overview. So what vessels does this um, um, convention, international load line convention apply to? And you also mentioned something about um, special timber, provisions. Just throw more light on application. Yes, so um, according to Article 4 of the International Load Line Convention, um, it talks about the applicability, which vessels this load line convention applies to. And according to that article, it says that all vessels above 24 meters in length, including badges, however propelled, self-propelled or non-self-propelled, shall be bound by this convention. But one thing we also need to realize is this is the minimum standard, okay. as IMO has always said. So a maritime administration may decide to enforce stricter rules. They might reduce this to 18 meters, or they might say all vessels, irrespective of the length, must apply to this um, convention. So that's uh, about the applicability. And um, Article 5 talks about the vessels that are exempt from this convention, which are ships of war, government vessels, pleasure yachts that are not engaged in trade, fishing vessels, because fishing vessels have their own special type of um, convention for load line because of the very critical stability issues for fishing vessels. You had said that um, the International Convention on Load Lines just provides minimum standards. So a maritime administration can decide to enforce stricter rules. You talked about for the convention is 24 or is it 18 meters for barges? So in Nigeria and Nimasa, do we have stricter rules or what is the exact provision under Nigerian laws in terms of load lines? Do you? Yeah, so um, for Nimasa, we mainly follow the International Load Line Convention rules, which is 24 meters, because most times these um, certifications are carried out on our behalf by recognized organizations, the classification societies. But um, during my experience working here, there have been times where we find out that some special kind of vessels, there's a need to particularly have special considerations for them. So that's also something we do sometimes, depending on the nature and the kind of goods the vessel is carrying. All right, excellent. <laughs>
when it comes to doing business in the Nigerian maritime space, you know there are rules, there are regulations, and the watchword remains compliance. And for the very simple reason that the maritime industry is heavily regulated and NIMASA is the nation's watchdog as far as compliance with all of the regulations and conventions and the rules are concerned. And there can be no better place to go than the NIMASA official website. And as we always say, make that website as the split on your screen your first port of call. Thank you for watching today's episode of Nimasa This Week, The Voice of Maritime. And we hope that you found some of the information we've shared with you very useful and educating. Nimasa remains committed to the three cardinal objectives of maritime security, maritime safety, and shipping development. Let me leave you with this word of advice. Be endless as the ocean and timeless as the tide. Till I see you next time, my name remains Ubong Isien, asking you, as always, to stay on course. Bye-bye.